Thank you, Jeff. Be seated, everybody, please. Jeffrey, you can call me Uncle Dick anytime. <laughs> Uncle Dicky. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and God bless you. It's been a it's been a long day. Let me look at my watch because blessed are the short-winded, for they shall be invited back next year. Amen. <laughs> Alex, that was uh, pretty awesome, man. I shouted so much I don't even know if I got a voice. And Wayne, that was a, a very convicting sermon. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I kept lifting my hand for everything you were talking about, but what a wonderful, wonderful ministry you have in helping, helping pastors. I actually uh, brought a couple of pretty good sermons I thought would work, but I left them at the hotel. Because about 3 o'clock in the morning with jet lag from California, I was reading our magazine. And I was honored that one of my articles made it in the 60th anniversary. I think it's called, uh, there's a new sound coming. Did you, everybody get the magazine? In, uh, have you got this magazine? The CGI magazine. So I was reading this article. I was actually, I read three or four chapters from your book, uh, Wayne, that you and Dr. Cho and a very wonderful, wonderful stories in there. A lot of the stories I heard over the years, but it was just pretty awesome to, to revisit some of the things that Dr. Cho has been through as a young man. And I was uh, just fiddling, I couldn't sleep, and I didn't want to wake my wife up. And so I was, I was reading this article, Have Big Dreams by Dr. Cho, Fourth Dimension Spirituality. Have big dreams and you will grow into them. And then on the other page, let your dream blossom. Can I, I'm going to ask you a question. How, how many of you, this is your first trip to Korea. How many of you, this is your very first trip? Most of you, wow. Can I ask you another question? Why are you here? What are you doing here? What did you expect to see, to hear? maybe to feel. Now, the reason I wanted to present that question to you is because I'm gonna back up to New Year's Eve 1985 when I was invited through some circumstances to go to this prayer mountain in Santa Cruz, California, which is close to the Pacific Ocean and very close to where we live in the San Francisco Bay Area, to hear this Korean woman they called Hallelujah Mama. I'd never heard of her. <laughs> Hallelujah Mama. I thought, who is Hallelujah Mama? A Korean lady in our church, Sophia, Sophia Choi, said, Pastor Dick, you must, you must meet Dr. Cho's mother-in-law. And I said, Dr. Cho's mother-in-law? The famous Dr. Cho? I'm there. So my wife and I, and I think it was just you and I, honey, and we, we drove up about an hour from our house. And then I met this little Korean guy with long hair. He looked kind of like a hippie. It was Dr. Kim, Dr. Paul Kim, who now heads up CGI America and is one of Dr. Cho's best friends. And been my elder at our church for 30 some odd years, and he's an elder here. But we, uh, we, just, we just connected. We just, we just hit it off. And I met Mama, and she, she fell in love with my wife. And, we went and had Korean food the next day, and she said, uh, Pastor Dick, you need to meet my son-in-law, Dr. Cho. I said, I would be honored to meet your son-in-law. She goes, you and lawyer Kim, you need to come to Korea. So about two, three months later, we jumped on an airplane, and it was our first time to Korea. That's 1986. Well, what I didn't know was Dr. Kim, or excuse me, Dr. Cho and Mama were having a little bit of a disagreement over some things of the church. So they were having just a little bit of a thing going on. And so we didn't know that. So when we went in to meet Dr. Cho, he gave us two minutes and then ran us out of his office. And he wasn't one bit friendly. We kind of looked at each other like, well, that was short, but at least I wanted to take a picture and all that. And and he, wasn't, he was busy. He said, I'm very sorry. I'm very, very busy. 
and thank you for coming. Well, we had a great time because Mama took us to Prayer Mountain, and we went Itaewon shopping and learned to eat kimchi. It takes a little while, but it's okay. Well, I get home, and like, well, there you go. I get a phone call. My, my receptionist is looking at me. She goes, Dr. Cho's on the phone. And I said, sure, right. It's one of my friends playing a joke on me. She goes, I think it's Dr. Cho. It sounds like Dr. Cho. I said, hello? He goes, Dick. Dick. I said, yes, it's Cho. He said, I must come to your church and preach for you. I said, when? He told me the date, like a couple of months. And I hung up the phone. Like, Dr. Cho's coming to my little old church to preach? I, I couldn't sleep that night. I was, so, I was so excited. So he came. Place was packed. Koreans came from all over Northern California. And we were playing golf the next day. And he said, uh, Dick, you and Lawyer Kim, you, you must come back to Korea. And I need to apologize to you. And I, I said, sir? He said, I was very rude to you when Mama, my mother-in-law, brought you to my office. Her and I, we were not getting along. And, and if you're friends with my mom-in-law, you're not friends with me. <laughs> Welcome to the family. He goes, I was praying. You know how he talks. Father, Father, why are my prayers not going into heaven? In fact, my prayers are not even reaching the ceiling of my office. And the Holy Spirit said, Cho, I sent you two men to disciple, and you kicked them out of your office. And I saw your face, Dick, and I saw Lawyer Kim's face. And so I apologize. He said, I'm supposed to, be, I'm supposed to disciple you, so I want you to come back to Korea. I want you to be on my CGI board, and I want you to preach at my church. I didn't play very good golf that day. I was so nervous and excited. And let me tell you what I did. I called everybody in America. Guess what? I'm going to preach for Dr. Cho. I'm going, I'm going to go to the biggest church of the world. And I'm going to preach for Dr. Cho on Sunday morning. I thought. So we come to Korea. I'm so excited. I worked on a sermon I thought the people would like at Yoido. And then I found out I'm not preaching on Sunday morning. I told everybody. I called people I didn't even know. <laughs> I said, hey, guess what? I'm going to Korea. I'm preaching with Dr. Cho. They go, who is this? I go, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I called everybody. I, I, was so, I was bragging. I was so excited. My little old church, and here I'm going to the largest church in the world to preach Sunday morning. Well, I get here. Not Sunday morning. I find out, oh, you're preaching Friday. I thought, Friday? Well, I found out that they have a huge prayer night on Friday. So, good, I'll, I'll preach on prayer. I'll preach on spiritual warfare. I'm going to get the people worked up. Well, then I found out it's not Friday night. It's Friday morning. At 10 o'clock. I said, nobody goes, to, nobody goes to church. I don't care if it's the biggest church in the world. Who goes to church Friday morning at 10 o'clock? Oh, I forgot to tell you. There's a typhoon. It was hitting Japan pretty hard. And we were catching, we were catching the, the outside you know, thing of it. And I remember my wife, we were at the Lote Hotel. And I remember, Wayne, I looked out the window, and I saw a tree blowing down the street. And they're going to pick us up in an hour. Who goes to church? <laughs> 10 o'clock Friday morning in a typhoon. <laughs> you saw the rain today? No, no. This rain was going sideways like 80 miles an hour. In fact, you look, there was nobody on the street. I looked, there was no, you know, Korea is. There was nobody. I thought, oh, my, I'm so, I'm going to go. There's going to be 20 people there. There's going to be the janitor, the lady that sweeps, or <laughs> the lady selling gum. You know, there's going to. So when I come to Dr. Cho's office, we're shaking hands, having tea, and saying greetings. He goes, let's go, Dick. 
I said, okay. I thought, we're going to the main sanctuary? There, there's, no, there's nobody going to. I thought, wow, I was going to take pictures. And we walked out into the platform. There's not an empty seat. And there's like 15,000 people in overflow. It's 10 o'clock, Friday morning, July the 17th, 1987, in a typhoon. And there's about 40,000 people at church. I forgot my notes. I think I preached the sorriest sermon in the history of Yoedo Full Gospel Church. I, I, my, I, mean, I just kept looking at I'm like, don't these people work? And it was mostly women. I noticed it was like, all women. Well, I found out it's their cell leader service. That's when the cell, the women cell leaders would come to the 10 o'clock service on Friday. So I'm, I'm preaching to cell leaders. I didn't know it. Well, I get done, and Lawyer Kim's interpreting for me. I have a big picture, a great big picture of it at home and in my office. And I sat down like this. Dr. Cho was sitting, Dr. Cho, Dr. Kim, and I, I, sat, next to, I sat next to Dr. Cho. And I'm, I'm kind of mad at myself because I thought, that, was, that, was a, that wasn't a good sermon. I'm, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed. And Dr. Cho pats me on my, my knee, and I got my eyes closed. He goes, Dick, Dick, open your eyes. I thought he meant like the eyes of your spirit, the eyes of. <laughs> and I got my eyes closed, and he, he's, 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 Dick, Dick, open your eyes. So I'm looking at him. He goes, what do you see? What do you see? One of the, one of the elders was taking the offering or doing something, and, and I said, uh, he says, what do you see? I said, I see uh, a whole lot of people in church on a Friday morning in a typhoon. <laughs> and he looked at me, he goes, you can have the same thing. And he started, he started to prophesy to me. He sowed a prophetic seed into my heart. And I remember flying home with that, with that word, you can have the same thing. Now, he didn't mean 800,000 Koreans, but he meant you can, you can have a big ministry, a big church, bless a lot of people if you'll only believe. So I, re I received that word. Now, this was in 1987. We had maybe 1,500 people. We had, a, we had a little rented building. It was the ugliest church in town. The ceiling was like, it looked like a bowl. It was just, it, 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 but it was our church. And across the street was a piece of land, and I wanted to build, I wanted to build a, a sanctuary for God. But we had no money. You know how it is. Well, 1988. I hired a man who, I hate to say it, I don't know how else to say it, but was a messenger from Satan to destroy our ministry. And yet he was smart, he was a hard worker, he had good credentials, but he liked young boys. And for a few years he had his way with many, many young men in our church until he was exposed. And it hit the, hit the papers, hit the news. We were the lead story, 6 o'clock, 10 o'clock news, front page of the paper. And hundreds of people began to leave our church. And for five years, I was in criminal trial. Dr. Kim and I and my wife were sued for $50 million by several families. We were sued for negligent hiring. We did nothing wrong, but they were suing us for hiring somebody who was evil, and they said you should have watched him better, which is ridiculous, because how do you watch somebody 24 hours a day? 
Plus, there was no warning sickness. And I remember my wife, I couldn't sleep. I was, and I would, I would read the Psalms. I, I would say, David, King David, how did you get out of this? How did you survive? Because when you think of David, you think of mercy. Have mercy on me. Oh, son of David, Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus. Jesus, I think, enjoyed being called the son of David. You know what mercy is? I just heard this recently, and even though I've heard it before, it, it, it's fresh in my mind. Mercy is God stopping what you deserve. Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. That's why the Bible says, obtain mercy and be grateful for it. But seek after grace. Find out who you are in Christ. And so we went through a horrible, horrible season that had the potential of shutting down our church. I had to battle discouragement every day. The sense of failure we heard a little earlier. But right, right in the middle of all this mess, 1988, you remember Jimmy Swaggart. I love Jimmy Swaggart. But I never met him. I'm preaching in a church of 50 people in kind of middle California by Fresno, Bakersfield. If you don't know where that is, it's in the, it's in the kind of the middle, south middle valley part of the state of California. A little Pentecostal church, Brother Fritchie. And every year he wanted me to come. He had a little church of 50 people and I'd I'd drive down there, and he'd put me in a little motel next to the freeway, real noisy, and, and he'd give me a $50 offering, and I'd put it back in the offering. And I got back to my room, Wayne, and I turned on the TV, and there is Brother Swaggart repenting. And I did something. I did something that shocked me. I rolled out of bed, and I started, I started, I started crying. I don't, I don't cry. I don't cry easy. And I started crying and, and praying for a man I'd never met. Of course, we all, you know, we knew about him. I just, maybe the most, him, Billy Graham, Oral Roberts, and Jimmy Swagger, the three biggest preachers in the world. And, of course, Dr. Cho, the greatest pastor. And the next day, I couldn't shake this thing. And so I called a friend named Steve Muncie. And I said, Steve, do you know anybody that knows Jimmy Swagger? He said, I actually have his home phone number. I said, give it to me. My wife remembers this. And I I called, and he picked up the phone. Hello, with that gorgeous voice of his. I said, Brother Jimmy? He goes, yes. I said, uh, my name is Dick Burnell. He goes, hey, Dick, how's Carla? We love watching you on TBN. You guys are different. You're, you're refreshing. We, enjoy, we watch you all the time. I said, oh, she's fine. Thank you, sir. He goes, what can I do for you? I said, I don't know. I don't even know why I'm calling you, but I think you need a friend. He says, well... I think you're right. I said, would you consider coming out here? And I'd like to take you to San Francisco. Maybe we could eat some crab together and just fellowship. He says, when? I said, as soon as you can. Two weeks later, he brings his whole family out. We take him to a beautiful restaurant in San Francisco. And while we're having dinner, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, have him preach for you. Jimmy had a big piece of crab in his mouth. I said, Brother Swagger, the Holy Spirit just whispered in my ear, you're supposed to preach for a Sunday. He started laughing. He goes, Dick, you're in enough trouble having dinner with me. He said, you don't want me preaching. I said, well, you're probably right, but I'm going to obey the Holy Spirit. And he goes, all right. He looked at Francis, his wife. She nodded. One of the best sermons I ever heard. He preached on Holy Communion, how Jesus took the bread, broke the bread, and gave the bread. And he said, I hope Jesus will take me and break me and give me back to the body of Christ. Everybody's crying. Everybody's crying. We're crying. We're all crying. And, and it, it was so tender, and he was so humble and broken. Of course, the press was there, and I got crucified. I got crucified by every church in town. But I wanted to obey the Holy Spirit. Well, because 
because I showed mercy, blessed are the merciful, for you shall obtain mercy. Because I showed mercy to this great preacher who made a mistake. There was a man sitting back there, white hair like mine, who gave Jimmy a million dollars every year for his ministry. Hard drinking, cussing, old Blue Jay he called himself. And he came in the back room and Jimmy introduced me to him, but he didn't want to meet, he didn't want to see, he, he wanted to hug Jimmy because Jimmy led him to Christ on TV. About a month and a half later, I see the man sitting at our church every Sunday. Finally, he comes up and he goes, hey, hey, Dick, or pastor, or whatever, whatever you go by. Do you remember me? I said, I sure do. You're, uh, you're Carl Story. He goes, uh, can you have lunch with me tomorrow, Monday? I said, sure. He says, I'll be in the bar at the Hacienda. You got a problem with that? I said, no, sir. <laughs> Not the way I was raised. <clears throat> I have no problem with that. I got saved late in life, by the way. And so there he was. And when I walked into the bar, he stood up. Hey, everybody, this is Pastor Dick Brunell. I had sunglasses, a baseball cap. Had my, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to go in clandestine. So I didn't know, I don't know what he said. I took my hat off like, well, whatever. He said, uh, I've been coming to your church. I said, yes, sir, I see you out there. He said, you want to know why? He goes, I, I don't really like your church. That Ron Canoli's too loud and people jumping up and down. Ron Canoli was our worship leader for 15 years. And, and he says, but uh, Francis called me and said, uh, Carl, are you going to church? He said, no, I'm just watching you and John Hagee on TV. That's all I'm doing. That's my church. She goes, no, I was praying this morning and God said, you tell him to go help Dick Brunell build that church. He says, so here am I. You need anything, preacher? I said, uh, I don't know how many drinks you've had in you, but uh, <laughs> the last thing you want to ask a preacher is do we need anything because we, <laughs> we need everything. <laughs> We're going to uh, Israel. He wanted to come with us not long after, and he's sitting with me, and he's doing his cocktails. And uh, he says, I'm going to go to sleep. He goes, Dick, by the way, God just told me to give you a million dollars. I said, Carl, God just told me to receive it in Jesus' name. <laughs> now, Jimmy already told me that he, old, old Carl gives me a million every year. I thought, wow, I'd never, I'd never got a check bigger than 50,000, 30,000, whatever, and we're trying, to, we're trying to build the kingdom. Well, right before he goes to sleep, he, he elbows me. He's by the window. I'm here. He, elbow, he elbows me, and he goes like this, and he puts his hand up, and so I gave him a high five. He goes, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, well, what are you doing? He goes, ah, I can't sleep because God told me to give you five million. <laughs> now, I'll be honest with you. I thought that was the vodka talking, not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> well, the next day in Tel Aviv, where we get ready to tour, he has aspirins and a, he's, he's got a hangover. He said, whoo, he said, uh, had a big time last night. I go, yeah, you sure did. <laughs> He goes, but remember, I promised you $5 million, and you'll get $5 million. He says, but I'm going to give it to you and Carla. I said, well, thank you, sir, but we're going to give it to the church because we want to build a house for God. He goes, I don't care if you flush it down the toilet. He said, I got to obey God. God told and he gave us $5 million. We were able to buy a piece of land, and now the bank said you could build your building for the glory of God. All because, what? listen, all because I showed mercy to a fallen preacher. Wayne, you do it all the time, but I'm not, that's not how I kind of flow. And a famous preacher. Not long after, I'm playing, I, I'm going to sound like a name dropper, but please forgive me. Because I am. <laughs> I'm a serial name dropper. I'm playing golf with Larry Lee and Oral Roberts in Southern California. And Larry goes, tell Oral the story. And Oral goes, what story? And we're up there warming up. So I told Brother Roberts the same thing I just told you. He gets down. He, he goes, lay your hands on me right now. Lay your hands on me. He said, I need $8 million yesterday <laughs> for the university. He says, 
He said, God just told me you have a unique anointing, Dick. In fact, Dag Mills and I just talked about this, and I prayed for Dag, Bishop Dag yesterday. Lay your hands on me. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm on a golf course. I'm going to lay hands on Earl Roberts. Are you kidding me? And Larry goes, like, so I prayed for him. He stood up. Thank you. And he said, oh, by the way, Dick, wherever you go in the world, pray for pastors and business leaders. He said, Dick, it, God has given you, Dick, God has given you a unique anointing to release a one-time huge gift so that churches and businesses could pop into a level of their dreams. Now, I've been doing that for over 20 years around the world with testimonies. Bob Rogers just gave me a testimony. He said, remember when you prayed for me in Korea? He said, this is what happened. Kong Hee. Yeah, I, I, could, I could name people that I have prayed for, and I, sometimes I don't feel anything, but it's amazing. It's amazing what happens. Tommy Barnett, uh, Oral Roberts had me pray for Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Myers in his office, uh, some of the biggest preachers. In fact, I had the littlest ministry of the people there. And he said, Dixon, lay hands on you, and you tell Dick what you want for your ministry. About three years ago, Benny Hens at my church, uh, he, he, he would use my church to do fundraisers. We're buddy. We've been friends for 30 years. And Benny uh, is complaining about his TV bill. TBN and Daystar, he's millions and millions and millions like. And I hear the Holy Spirit say, tell Benny about your gift from Carl's story. And I, I thought, no, no, everybody, everybody knows that story. The Holy Spirit kept telling, telling. So I said, I kind of interrupted him. I said, uh, Pastor, I said, uh, did I ever tell you the story about the guy that gave me $5 million? And he goes, no, tell me. <laughs> so he's sitting across the little green room in our youth center. And when I told him the story, he got down to his hands and knees, Carla, you remember that, and he crawled over and put his hand, he goes, pray for me right now, pray for me right now. He said, I'm so in debt, it's, it's horrible. And so I prayed for him. He said, what are you doing Monday night? I said, I don't know, why? He said, I want you on my TV show. I want you to tell the story to our TV audience. I don't know if you ever watched This Is Your Day, but he's had me on there 10 times for the last two years because his producer says, every time they show you telling that story, offerings come pouring in. Not only that, one man bailed him out of his whole debt because that's what we prayed for. Now, all the while, I'm going through the lawsuit of $50 million. So it's like, I'm in hell, I'm in heaven. I'm in hell, I'm in heaven. I'm in hell, I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm, the lawyers are killing me over here and people are blessing me over here. It's like, this is weird, man. And it, it, was, it was God telling me, you're not through. The church is not going to be destroyed. It's going to be all right. And people, people that left, people started coming back. Some didn't, but a lot of new people did. And we were able to build a beautiful, beautiful sanctuary. That's a little miniature Yoido. I kind of built it with, like, with the same style as Yoido with the balcony and the top balcony. And Dr. Cho came in and dedicated it for us back in 1998. But the reason I wanted to, to share this with you is when I was going through the worst of the worst, that prophecy from Dr. Cho, open your eyes. What do you see? You can have the same thing. And by God's grace, we built the, we built the largest church in Northern California. We're not the, we weren't the, now, we, we weren't the largest church of the world. But that, that word, that prophecy from my pastor, little did I know that hell was coming fast. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us out of them all. Amen. And when I share that story, I've been traveling, I've been traveling the world, some of the biggest churches in the world, doing what I'm going to do with you in just a moment. 
I'm going to release that over you. Everybody that's here. Pastors, business people. Bob Rogers stopped me in the hotel. He goes, Dick, you remember when Richard, Richard Roberts and we were having lunch? He said, remember when you prayed for us? Because it was Richard's dad that put the, put the prophetic word on me. Dick, wherever you go, pray for leaders. Bob said, I was 700,000. You could ask him. And he said, you prayed for me. And all of a sudden, it turned around and money started pouring in. Tommy Ornett told this whole church. How many of you know Dick Brunel? A few hands went up. He said, the biggest gift I ever got in 40 years of ministry was a $200,000 gift. He goes, and Dick prayed for me in Oral Roberts' office. $12 million came in. $12 million came in for the Dream Center. Now, I know it, it, sounds, it can sound mystical. It can sound gimmicky, even a little hokey. And I don't know, I don't know how it works. But I believe Dr. Cho's a prophet, and he prophesied. If you can see it and you can say it, you can have it. Amen. What do you see? I see 40,000 people in a typhoon listening to me at 10 o'clock on a Friday morning in July. He says, you can, have, you can have this. You can have this if you believe it. I believe Oral Roberts is a prophet when he said, Dick, God told me he has given you a very unique anointing. And you lay hands on whoever. Speak over. I just did it in Norman, Oklahoma two weeks ago. I've done it all over Europe, South America, Australia. If people ask me to come, usually it's to bring that anointing and to bring that blessing. I mean, I've got a lot of sermons. I just wrote a new book on spiritual warfare. I could do all kinds of things. But now that I've, I've resigned pastoring, a fellow by the name of Ron Carpenter, some of you know Ron. Ron and his wife have taken over the pastorate of my church. John Grace taken over <laughs> over redemption in South Carolina. We did kind of a trifecta. And now my wife and I are free to, to go to the world. And Dag, I didn't tell you this, but we had lunch with Larry Stocksdale. And I got another prophecy of what God wants to do with us. And we're just having, we're just having lunch. And all of a sudden, Larry just started, Dick, this is what I see. I want you to come with me. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to some of the biggest men's groups and churches in the world. And you got something that churches need to hear. And he just he started in, started in. And I, I, I felt almost that same thing that 31 years ago when Dr. Cho gave me the prophecy up in the sanctuary. You, you just feel that word, that word just seep into your spirit. Maybe it's a seed, but it's going to grow. Amen? Amen? I want you to stand up. My two boys are here. My daughter. Why would I spend 25, seven of it? Why would I spend 25, this is my 35th time to Korea. Why would I spend $25,000 in tickets plus some hotel bills? Because every time I come here, I get bigger. I get bolder. I get taller. I even get better looking. All right, forget the last one, but... Every time I come to Korea, Alex, I, I get something fresh. I just got a, I got a word from Larry. Every time, every time I come here, that's why I ask you, why are you here? Even if you don't know, well, we wanted to see the church. I'm, well, I'm with my pastors. Uh, I'm with, that's wonderful. But every one of you, you're going to take something home you may not realize until you get there. Something's going to get inside of you. We came, we came to see the greatest church in the history of the world. We came to hear the greatest pastor and pray for him because he's got, he's got some medical issues that we, and I'm really praying tomorrow, six hours. I, you saw Dr. Cho struggling, and we really need to pray for his strength tomorrow. Uh, and we need, we need him around another 10, 20, I don't know. His mom and dad almost lived to be 100, so we're believing he's got, he's got but. But he, let's just agree with him that he's going to be strong tomorrow. Amen? Amen? My sons and I, Adam's Pastor Adam, Pastor Jesse are here, my daughter Sarah. We like to fish. My, my whole family's fishermen. And we go to Alaska, we go to Canada, and we do a thing called catch and release. Now, the little fish we catch and eat. But the big fish, the big fish, we catch, take a picture, and release them. Why? Because big fish breed big fish. Now, 
I'm, I'm bringing an anointing that can make you so much bigger inside you. So much bigger. If you're here, it's obvious you have a vision. It might be to support your pastor and your church. Maybe you're a senior pastor. You're trying to build the building. I travel the world raising money for people to have their dream fulfilled with their campus. But every vision needs provision. Pro means for. What good is vision if we don't have the monies to pay for it? So that's what God is calling me to. I've been pastoring for 37 and a half years. Race lifted. I'll help my sons. My daughter's helping me with Jubilee Legacy Ministry. But now I'm a free agent. I'm free to travel and go where the Lord leads me. And I'm really glad I'm here for you. And I'm really glad you're here at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, half asleep, tired. But you made it to this service. And the reason you made it to this service, and please stay to hear Dag, because he'll just piggyback on this and bring a tremendous word. But the reason you're here is something big is going to happen to you. Oral Roberts had me do something that really embarrassed me, Paula. He had me, when he had me pray for Kenneth and Joyce and, gosh, I mean, the biggest ministries in, in Oral's office, he made them whisper in my ear what they were believing for over the next 12 months. So I'm getting like 50 million, 80 million. You know, these big ministries got big budgets. Because I believe, I believe you need to release that out of your mouth. Who, who was it this morning? I think it was Phil Pringle who said, the first word spoken by God was not communication, it was creation. <laughs> Later he communicated. But the first thing, let there be. So I want you to prophesy to your future. Listen, your, your spirit believes your voice more than anybody else's voice. We're trained like that. I hope you believe what I'm saying, but you'll really believe it when you hear yourself say it. I want you to close your eyes for 30 seconds, and I want you to ask yourself this question. How much provision do I need over the next 12 months for my dream to come true? Dr. Cho wrote this article, let your dream blossom. Read it while you're here. But for your dream to blossom, you need dream seeds. My friend Mike Murdoch, I think, coined that phrase. You need dream seeds. Now listen, this room right here is good soil. But soil doesn't necessarily determine the harvest. All soil does is put pressure on the seed to pop open, it's the seed that produces the harvest. But you, you have to have good soil. This room right here is good soil. But what's going to come out of your mouth is the seed of your faith. So close your eyes, ask yourself this question. What do I need for my ministry? What do I need for my business? What do I need for my church? To go to a level to expand the kingdom of God, to bring blessing to my city, maybe even my nation. You have a vision, I pray it's clear. You're focused, and you have faith, and you have passion. But you need to release a prophetic word over your future. Give yourself a few more seconds. Alex taught us how to shout. Let's shout with some clout. We shouted praises, which is the precursor to anything. 
Judah went before the army. Praise goes before. Praise opens the heavens to where blessing could come down when the word's being preached. That's why I like a lot of praise and worship because it opens the heaven. Judah plows. The prophet said, Judah plows. Ephraim pulls. I think it's Jacob that breaks up the clods. Beautiful prophetic word. So we already shouted a shout of praise, but I want you to have some clout in your shout because this is a financial shout. On the count of three, at the top of your voice, tell God how much you need. Now, don't make me embarrass you, because if I see somebody whispering, I'll make you do it, and we're all going to listen to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was pathetic. I, I don't, I don't want the angels of the heaven say, what was that, what was that, what was that down there, Father? And the Father to say, I'm trying to get them to say it so loud. I want all the devils to hear it. I want the angels to hear it. So please, this is no time to be polite. One, two, three. Yes! 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 Somebody say yes! Yes! I agree! Yes! 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 Somebody say yes! 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 And amen. Come on! Yeah! 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, 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 yes. Back up, back up. Back up a bit. Back up. Back. Turn the music down a little bit. I believe, I wrote a book, I wrote a book called Shaking Hands with God. I believe in the power of agreement. I really believe in the power of agreement. Every time my wife and I get in agreement, it's amazing. I wish I had time to tell a few stories on you, but I don't. I may not be able to touch each and every one of you. So Paul told Timothy, of course, by the laying on the hands, but he also said, through his words, to stir up the gift. And then as young Timothy was going through big problems, he was like the first mega pastor. He was like the original Joe Osteen. He said, remember the prophecy. That saved my life. When I thought my ministry was over, I was gonna be a failure. I was going to tuck my tail and run and hide. I'd close my eyes and I'd hear Dr. Cho say, open your eyes. And what do you see? You can have the same thing. So I want you to never forget this day. I don't care if you remember my name. I don't even know if I quoted any scriptures. But I know when I've, I know when I've released something over a congregation, and especially people like you who spent hard-earned money to get on an airplane, to fly all the way to Korea. You're a serious crowd. I'm looking at some serious people that want to do some serious work for the kingdom of God. So, Father, look out. God bless you. Look out, look out. These guys from Eastern Europe are strong. They're about to break my hand here. 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now stretch your hand towards me because we're going to agree. You know, you know where the handshake came from? They used to, they used to shake hands by grabbing the arm because they wanted to make sure you didn't have a knife. That's where the handshake came from. But then they would cut the, they would cut the palm of their hand and then make a covenant. So I'm going to make a covenant with you right now. I'm going to agree with you. Now, Father, I believe Oral's a prophet. I believe what he said is prophetic. I've been walking in this, Lord, for 20 plus years, and I just release over everybody within the sound of my voice. I release an anointing of large gifts. Large gifts. Large gifts. Large. Large. Dag Mills, I said, I said six months. Alex, I just heard October. I heard October, I don't know, I heard October. Adam, Michelle, Jesse, get ready. Jubilee Bridge is gonna, there's gonna be some, there's gonna be some mind blown things come to our church. Sarah, you may have to open up another bank account because Jubilee Legacy. Wayne, get ready, get ready, get ready. Paula, I'm even afraid to tell you what's happening, but I know you can take it. Now, Father, I just stretch my hand over my brothers and my sisters. And Lord, I release, I release that anointing. I release that anointing over my brothers and sisters. I feel it up here. All right, I got, I got to stop. We got to get Dag up here. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, I heard you. Heaven heard you. And it's done. God bless you. God bless you. Go be seated, everybody. Be seated. Thank you. Be seated. We're going to have a great time tomorrow at the prayer rally. Looking forward to a wonderful day. I want you to give a, I want you to thank Jeffrey, our, our C, head of our CGI. This man has, this is like the biggest thing CGI has ever done, and you've only been doing this for about like a year, and you're doing a wonderful job. Give Jeffrey a big hand. Ready, everybody? All right, go, go, go be seated, go be seated, Ooh, go, I tell you what, no, go be seated, I get, we got, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, I wish I could spend time with each and every one of you. Our next speaker is one of the great, great leaders in the whole continent of Africa. I had the pleasure, I was, I was Dr. Cho's preaching assistant for about 10 years. I traveled the world with Dr. Cho, Dr. Kim and I, we traveled the world with Dr. Cho preaching.